I'm Carlo Mancatelli of Time2 Resources. This video will help you to understand production possibility curves. If you want to make notes whilst following the video, why not download the handy PDF note taker? The link can be found in the description box below. The production possibility curve can be used to show the maximum output of combinations of two products, for example, good X and good Y, given the resources available. As the output of good X increases, that of good Y decreases and vice versa. The PPC illustrates the problem of choosing how to use scarce resources when producing goods and services. There is an opportunity cost in deciding what combinations of good X and good Y to produce. Let's take a scenario where a firm can produce the following combinations of apples and pears when operating at maximum capacity. We can see that at point A it can produce 60 apples but no pears, at point B it can produce 40 apples and 20 pears and so on. The opportunity cost of moving from point A to point B is the benefit foregone of the next best alternative, that is the apples lost when producing pears instead of them. This is an important point. The opportunity cost is what the firm has lost when changing production, that is the apples. It is not what is gained, that is the pears. Why not pause the video and work out the opportunity cost of moving from point B to point C. Again, the opportunity cost is 20 apples, 40 minus 20. Why not pause the video and work out the opportunity cost of moving from point D to point C. Here, the opportunity cost is eight pairs, that is 40 minus 32. Producing anywhere along the PPC, for example, points A to D, shows a full use of resources. All factors of production are being used and there is no unemployment of economic resources. Producing anywhere within the PPC shows under use of resources, for example, at points E. More resources could be used if there was an increase in efficiency. At point E, we could produce more of both apples and pears without affecting the current output of these products. This shows an inefficiency as not all resources are being used. Point F is unobtainable as there are not enough resources to produce this level of output. The PPC can be used to show a range of concepts. As we have seen, opportunity cost is the benefit foregone of the next best alternative. By choosing good X, the economic agent sacrifices the benefit of using good Y. Here, by giving up 60 units of apples, the firm gains 40 units of pears. The opportunity cost of the 40 units of pears is the 60 units of apples that it has foregone. There is therefore a choice between two competing resources. This is due to resources being scarce. Remember the basic economic problem is due to infinite wants but finite resources. Movements along the PPC show the trade-off between the range of choices that a firm has. The relationship shown in changing between two specific points on the PPC shows the opportunity cost. The PPC can also be used to show the concept of conflicting objectives. Should an economy invest in producing consumer goods that will benefit consumers today? Or should it produce capital goods which will bring a stream of income in the future. We can also see the concept of productive efficiency, using the minimum inputs to produce the maximum output at the lowest cost. This can be seen anywhere along the PPC. If the production of one good becomes more efficient, there will be a shift in one axis of the PPC. The diagram illustrates a situation where the production of apples has become more efficient. Here, an increase in the productivity of producing apples has led to a movement of the PPC from PPC1 to PPC2. If the production of both apples and pears improved, the PPC would shift rather than tilt from one axis. Pause the video and see if you can illustrate this diagrammatically. Economic growth can be illustrated by an outward shift of the PPC. Here, an economy can produce consumer goods and capital goods. New technology might help to improve the productivity 
for both types of good. This will be illustrated by a shift outwards and to the right from PPC1 to PPC2. Negative economic growth during a recession can be shown by an inward shift of the PPC. Can you illustrate this diagrammatically? Thank you for watching and listening to this video. Production possibility curves are normally the first diagram that you encounter when studying economics. We hope that this is an introduction to a lifelong love of the subject. If you haven't already done so, why not subscribe to the Time to Resources YouTube channel now.